This is Ken Kreitzer for Cam Vets Media. We're at the Army Navy Media Day. Get a chance to talk to the athletic director of the United States Military Academy, and that is Mike Buddy. Uh, Mike, good to see you. What's it like to be down here back in Philadelphia for the Army Navy game and the Media Day today? It's great to be here. I mean, it, obviously, it's great for several reasons. One is it means kickoffs getting closer, um, and then number two, it's always it's always a great event. Love to hear um, the captains speak and interact with with people here in Philadelphia who embrace this game extremely well. And so, I'm really excited to be back and um, excited to count down these last 10, 10 days or so. A lot going on. You had your best men's basketball team in London this week. Uh, your uh, women's soccer uh, captain, Lauren Drysdale, was first captain of the Corps of Cadets. And, uh, and Ethan Bergen from the wrestling team, the 125-pounder, pinned his opponent from Iowa when they were at West Point a couple of weeks ago. Uh, uh, what have been some of the highlights for you this fall? Well, I mean, you just mentioned several. Um, certainly getting off to a great start wrestling. Um, really proud of our soccer programs. Um, both Tracy Chow on the women's side and Brian Plotkin on the men's side named Patriot League Coaches of the Year. Um, regular season champions for both of them, so really successful there. Alma Kavachi Lee continues to have our volleyball team playing at a high, uh, a high success rate. Uh, Co-champions in the regular season of the Patriot League as well. And so uh, it's been a, a great couple months here, and you know this is that little overlap where the fall team Teams are wrapping up. The winter teams are in full full force. Coach Riley and the hockey team uh, as busy as always, and so it's an exciting time to be an athletics director. And you got your uh, two football captains here, uh, tremendous leaders, Markel Broughton and Connor Bishop, and Coach Monk. And what is it like uh, uh, to bring uh, you know your leaders from athletics to uh, the Army Navy game? Well, it's it's a great feeling. Um, you know, I encourage our, our any any reporter, any social media site. To, to put a microphone in front of the young men and women who, who represent Army West Point uh, and, and the athletic realm because they're just phenomenal young people. And, um, you know, there are schools where athletic directors have to pick and choose who to do the interviews um, because some some do it better than others. And it's, it's a great comfort for me knowing that you could put a microphone in front of any of the young men and women who represent Army West Point, and they're just gonna, they're gonna blow your mind with, with how well they articulate, um, how they feel about serving their country, how they approach their academic challenges, how they uh, love being a part of, of teams, not just the teams that, that they wear, their uniforms, uh, but the Army team as well. And so, you know, that starts with Coach Munkin and his staff, and certainly uh, the more time you spend with Connor Bishop and Markwell, the more impressed you are with, with who they are as human beings, and that's, that's a great comfort for me as an athletic director. Absolutely. We enjoy talking to all of your athletes, your cadets uh, during the course of the year. Now, you got a big project that's going to start happening soon with the uh, reconstruction of the East Stands at Mikey Stadium. Uh, I understand it's going to start uh, next year. What can you tell us about uh, how the project is moving forward? Well, you know, we had a phenomenal um, announcement uh, in July of, of last year, and, and we were able to raise nearly $100 million in, in about 10 months. Um, that's put us in this position to go ahead and break ground uh, after graduation uh, in 2023. Uh, we're looking at about 20 months of construction for the new East Stands, which is, is going to completely transform Mikey Stadium. And what I love most about it, Ken, is um, three, course of, three, three quarters of the stadium is going to look and feel the exact same. And so for the purists who love sitting in the, in the fog and the rain and, the, and, and some of the beautiful days, uh, they'll still have that option. But for those who prefer a, a premium experience, whether it's a suite, whether it's a club seat, a ledge seat, or sitting in a loge, um, we're going to have those options, which have, have never existed at Mikey Stadium, that'll, that'll help us host NHL hockey games and wedding receptions and all those uh, great opportunities that a lot of other football stadiums have been doing for years. And this will be the first time in the history of Mikey Stadium that we actually have a space that can be utilized for so much more than just football and lacrosse games. Very good. You know, I have to say, I finally saw a picture of Mikey Stadium from the 1920s when they were playing baseball there. And that's the, re the answer to the question I always had about why they never build permanent, permanent stands in the east side of the stadium. Did you ever see the baseball configuration? I've never seen the baseball configuration. I've seen early photos where there were no stands at all and they were just standing 15 deep, um, but have not seen the baseball configuration. You know, with my background, Ken, the, the bigger the field, the better, in my opinion. Absolutely. Mike Buddy, the Athletic Director of the United States Military Academy. Great to chat with you today. Ken, thanks for all you do for us. Absolutely. Appreciate that. This is Ken Kreitzer for Canvats Media.